My name is Carsten Wolf, and I'm an analog designer. I'm a programmer. I'm an assistant professor at Norwegian University of Science and Technology, and I've been working on this course called Advanced Integrated Circuits that I'm going to teach in the spring of uh, 2023. And in that course, we're going to use the Skywater PDK and the open source tools. Now, my interest is analog design. And when you do analog design, at some point, you're going to have a feedback loop, like uh, with an op amp. And I finally figured out how to run loop stability analysis. And I just want to run through that. So let's dive into the details. So here I have my repository uh, called ASEX. Just uh, I've got a few files. We can get so you can find this on my GitHub page. Now, what I want to show you first is let's see the actual schematic. So I'm using XCAM. Now I have a particular layout for the folders and directories and design files and so on. So that's entirely of my own creation. But let's have a look at the schematic. So let's make it a bit bigger. So this is a typical band gap type of circuit. It creates a positive or a uh, current that is proportional to absolute temperature or PTAT. The way it does that we won't go into that right now. If you want to learn that, then <laughs> read the book or watch the lectures. Anyway, that has an op amp inside. Now, the purpose of the op amp is to make sure that this VD1, or the voltage across this PN junction, is copied and is exactly the same as this node called VR1. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So we want those two voltages to be exactly the same, as, as close as we can make them. And for to do that, we use an op amp. This is a typical current mirror op amp. So we have a diff pair. We have a current that comes in. Here I'm actually ha I here actually have a sort of a additional bias current just to get the op amp started. And then we mirror the current, it goes around, and at the output here, here we have the high impedance node that drives the gate in the uh, band gap circuit. On the right side here is just a startup. If you want to have a look closer look at the schematics, just go to ASEX and you'll find the full schematics there. But when we have a feedback loop like this, one of the key things we're interested in is, is it stable? What is the loop gain? How does the phase evolve with frequency? Now, in commercial tools like Cadence, you have analysis for that. In NGSpice, it's not built in, I believe, into the uh, simulator. So there's no function that I know of, at least, where you can just say run loop stability. So the NGSpice, it needs a spice file to set up the uh, simulation and that's what I have on the right side here I pull in the spice file I'm using uh, I'm using my own Python tool to make it easier for me to run corners it's called CIC sim and you'll also find that in a repository on my github page so let's go into sim and then it's going to replay bias. And here, let's pick out the spice files. I have a few test benches. And actually in the folder above, there'll be a file called um, T on sub circuit. Now this is something I found on one of the forums for NGSpice. It's made by, uh, I believe his name is Holger Wacht. So big thanks to Holger. Thanks for contributing that. And I, I also believe he's one of the maintainers and coders on NGSpice. Inside here, we have a transient analysis that I use to check the accuracy of the current and also the reference voltage that comes out. And then I have the loop stability. So the loop stability is what we see here. This part, let's ignore that. That's for the extracted layout. I 
And the CO sim has an additional option so it understands if devs. So I can choose and add options for that uh, CIC, CIC sim command. Just some parameters, setting up the grounds, the VDD, the power up signal. And then I include this TN loop subcircuit. Let's have a look at that. So inside the TN loop, you'll find some descriptions. And the key thing here, it, it is it is a component that you insert into your feedback loop at a certain point. Now, it consists of a DC uh, current source, or it, it consists of three things, three sources, three independent sources, a current source and two voltage sources. Now, the two voltage sources, they sort of sit in the loop like this. <laughs> and then the current source sits in the middle. Let me uh, go full screen to try and uh, visualize that. So imagine you have your two points in your loop and you need to break those. And you saw in, in the schematic, I had put in ports to do that. So I can do that at the top level. And then you have two DC sources that sit between them. And that creates a node in the middle, which we in this case called X. And there's a current source to ground. Now the trick with the TN method and Actually, originally, this was uh, introduced by Middlebrook, and you can find the paper ref references here. The TN improved, improved the um, methodology. And uh, Ken Cudard, he's also a pretty good guy when it comes to uh, spice simulation. And this method is exactly the same that is used in uh, KDC. Now, to calculate the loop, uh, the loop gain, or the loop, uh, what should we call it? The loop response. Then we use uh, this equation, and luckily somebody else has written it for me, so I don't need to worry about it, as long as the results are okay. So then I can include this, and it's important that it's called x999. Oh, let me go back to the screen so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, let's go back here. So here you can see the three sources, and this tn loop uh, function that actually uh, computes the uh, the loop response. It's important to include uh, the file. Now, if you are very astute, you would notice that my tn subcircuit lib is actually just one folder above, but here I say it's two folders above. The reason for that is that when you look at the files in this folder, the CIC sim actually puts the output in a separate folder. So just quick introduction to CIC sim. It will take my spice file that you see here on the right, uh, and it will output a spice file. Now the reason, actually, let's go to. Now the reason I do that is because when we simulate uh, circuits, we have to change things. I have to change temperature, voltage, uh, process corner, and maybe even run Monte Carlo simulations. Now, I don't want to do that with sort of changing the spice file. So I've created this Python tool that just, just allows me to parse the spice file that I want to write, and then it outputs a similar spice file, but where the corners are included. So in this case, I'm running typical and typical voltage and temperature. That's not important now. Maybe I have to create a video on the CIC sim at some point. So, once we have this loop game probe, and it's important with the name, as I said, then we can break our loop. So LPI and LPO is the input and output to the loop. Uh, these are other things, just to give voltages for the currents that come out. It's also important to save the internal nodes in this loop stability. So it's important to s uh, yeah, save these nodes, and they have to be called uh, exactly this. Now what happens in this TN or Middlebrook TN technique is that you run two AC analysis. In one AC analysis, you set the voltage of one of the sources inside this loop stability probe to one, and you then you run another simulation where you set the current to one. Now it turns out with those two, you can actually compute the loop response. And the good thing about this method is that it keeps the impedances looking into the loop and looking out of the loop the same. And the reason we want to do that is because that ensures that when we kind of break the loop, we don't introduce a different output impedance or a different operating point 
and it's the best technique uh, to check stability. Then we can use the TM loop function to calculate the uh, loop magnitude and the loop phase. So let me run this. Now I should say that I'm a big fan of uh, make files. So this make file actually runs my CIC sim script. So when I just type typical, it will first actually extract the um, spice net list from the schematic. You can see that up here. And then it'll run. If I write make typical tblstb, it will uh, extract the spice net list and then run simulations. This takes a bit. Now, in the spice file, I've also added a direct sort of plotting of the loop gain and loop phase. It's good to be able to look at that. But after the simulation, I actually run a second ng spice simulation. Well, it's not actually a simulation, but it's more post processing of the waveforms. So once the simulation has completed, then my Python script will actually go and look. Is there a file called the same as the test bench with the .me as ending? And if it finds that, it'll run that in ngSpice afterwards because that allows me to extract like the gain margin, the phase margin, the 3 dB frequency of this uh, loop, the unity gain, and the low frequency gain. And you can see those parameters here. So right now, my phase margin is about 48 degrees which is maybe a little bit uh, tight, depends on what you want, but definitely you don't want to go too far below 45 degrees unless you really know what you're doing. So I also mentioned that this outputs a plot. So let's have a look at that. Gain and the face. Okay, so here we can see that we get the, uh, well, kind of expected response of this. It has 40 something gain. What was the actual gain? Let's see. It was, the easy gain was 44, 44 dB. That's not too bad. And then it's maybe enough for this uh, circuit. And we can see the phase response. I just want to show you just quickly. I can also run make typical so fast or as I call it, TFS. Now, what this would do is actually run multiple simulations after each other. So the first now, you can see it runs actually in the same corner. Um, but here you can see the why I like the CIC sim, because you can just give it the combination of corners and it will automatically compute and generate the spice files for the different corners and then run simulations. So typical is finished, now it's starting actually the slow corner, or slow transistor corner, and so on. So you can sort of set this off as a batch job at the end of the day, and just wait for the results. Okay, that's what I wanted to cover today. So the main topic was the loop stability analysis, and how to do that. I'm going to cancel the simulation, and again, you can find the files and everything you need there. Have a fantastic day.